why hello, I did not see you there. Welcome to my channel, this is Drew here from Lone Fox. Cheers. Okay guys, that was a little bit too much. Welcome back to my channel. I am really energized and hyped this morning because I have literally already been drinking my coffee because today's video is kindly sponsored by Javalia, which is super exciting because I've known about Javalia for the longest time. My parents have drank their coffee forever and I've had it multiple times at my parents' house. As many of you guys know, I recently moved to a new apartment, which meant I had to find a new coffee shop. And guess what? There are no coffee shops within like easy walking distance. The closest one's like 0.7 miles away which is just like, it's a, it's a walk, you know? So I've been trying to make coffee more at home and I have been absolutely in love with using Javalia coffee. I actually created this iced coffee this morning. I'm a huge iced coffee fan and I actually have a recipe for you guys, which I'm going to include right after this intro. I'm showing how I did this. It's like a vanilla, sweet cream, cold, foamy, coffee situation. It's really, really good. But Javalia strives to help people live a life less ordinary and just awaken whatever is brewing inside, whether that be your passions, your hobbies, your loves, your interests, whatever they are. This is a great start to any day. And I don't know if you guys are like me, but I literally go to bed waiting to have coffee in the morning. Like I absolutely love getting up. That's the first thing I think about is like, I'm going to get coffee. Like this is, it's such an exciting feeling. I don't know if anyone else feels that like just a morning coffee is one of my favorite small things throughout the day. Um, and then sometimes I'll have an afternoon one too, but we don't need to talk about that. But before jumping into those projects, let me share with you guys my iced coffee recipe using Javalia coffee. And then we're gonna dive right into those wall decor items and it's gonna be a fun video. So give this one a thumbs up and let's get into the recipe. If you're a fan of strong but sweet coffee, which is my personal favorite, I'm going to be using the Javalia House Blend coffee today. And I'm going to be brewing up a pot of this. Now, the thing I love about the Javalia beans is that they are slow roasted and snap cooled to release aroma and flavor. So they're super, super flavorful. And it's just such a, like a great coffee. Like if you guys taste this, you're going to love it for sure. So I'm brewing up a hot pot of this. Um, sometimes I drink it hot. Most times I drink it cold. I'll just pop it in the fridge for a little bit. Um, and it actually lasts me a couple days with one pot. So now we're gonna add some half and half to a small blender with some vanilla syrup. And I'm going to just kind of froth this up. I don't have a frother, so this is how I'm gonna do that. And we're going to construct the coffee by adding some ice cubes, of course our coffee, and then our vanilla flavoring on top. And if you guys would like to check out Javalia, use the link in the description box below and use discount code Javalia20 on your order. You have to try this coffee, it is amazing. And this recipe too is just, honestly, it's great guys. We are honestly gonna start off with one of my favorite projects in this video. I absolutely love the outcome of this project and I am going to start off by measuring this small little piece of scrap wood to 24 inches in length. You can use a dowel or whatever you have on hand. So I cut this down to two feet and then we're going to be grabbing our macrame cording and I'm going to be measuring this out to about five and a half feet per string and you're going to need a lot of these. So it actually is determined on the width of the wood that you cut, but I just cut a whole ton of these and you're going to see exactly why. So next, what we're gonna be doing is grabbing the hot glue gun and I'm going to be gluing these on the back side of the wood and you're gonna to wanna to glue them pretty close together. You can space them out however you want to. However, if you are spacing them out, make sure every space is symmetrical. So I just went ahead and just glued them right next to each other. That way it was really full in the end. So here's my little piece of a macrame that I glued down. And as you can see, it's about 10 inches in length. So I went to the other side of my wood and I measured out 10 inches and made a mark because we are going to then be kind of swapping the strings over and gluing them down, which you're gonna see in a second here. So I'm grabbing my first string on the left side. I'm putting it underneath all of the strings and I'm going to be gluing it down over the top of our marker. This is just going to basically make it so that all the strings lay just exactly how they were in the first section. And this is going to be very repetitive from now on. You're going to grab the furthest string away, put it underneath all the strings and then glue it next to the one that is to the right of it. And once you complete gluing all of these down all the way across the strip. It's just going to create a really pretty, almost like half circle cascading waterfall effect, which I just love the way that this looks. And it's very simple for people that don't know how to macrame, which I love. So as you can see here, still moving my way over, you're going to make sure to always go underneath the strands with the strand furthest to you. Glue it down as shown here. 
and then we're gonna finish that off. When you hang it up, this is what I'm talking about. It has this really cool kind of hanging waterfall vibe, and I'm gonna fill up this bucket with some hot water. This is totally optional, adding in a little bit of brown dye, and I'm going to be dip dyeing this to an ombre effect. So I'm dipping this in to start. As you can see, the first color is going to be dipped the deepest in the water because we're gonna want the lightest color to kind of go the highest on our macrame. Then add a little bit more dye and then dip about halfway, leaving those top portions that we first dipped still exposed. That way you have a little bit of a lightish shade cascading to a medium shade. Then we're going in with a darker shade here. This is going to dip in and it's really gonna saturate those bottom strands. And I actually did it one more time by adding just a little bit more dye in there and dipping it just once more and this finishes off our macrame wall hanging. Just let it dry, hang up, and enjoy. This next project is super, super simple and totally customizable. I'm starting off with some joint compound and some acrylic paint, and I'm gonna just grab some of my joint compound and put it on top of a plastic surface or something you could mix it on top of, like a piece of parchment paper or something or a paper plate. And I'm gonna be mixing up the acrylic paint with the joint compound and essentially creating a really thick kind of paste, which we're then going to be spatulaing on top of a canvas. So it's just like a textured piece of wall art, and I'm going to be mixing in the paint it's so pleasing watching that paint mix with the compound and it's really nice to do it with one of these spatulas however guys I do want to let you know that I would suggest using a wall spackle as opposed to a compound if you could find a lightweight wall spackle that will work a lot better because the joint compound actually does crack a bit which I think adds to the vibe however if you want it to remain smooth and as you applied it I would suggest using a wall spackle As you can see here, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I just like the ombre effect that it gives. And next I'm adding a little bit of gold and I added a touch of yellow in there just to make it a bit more vibrant. And I'll be adding that color above our yellow that we added prior, working our way up to the top. I'm now doing a nice light tan tone. And then once I finish the tan tone, I'm actually just gonna go straight in with the joint compound itself and add it to the top section there because it's already pretty light. You're gonna let this dry overnight and that finishes this piece off. Project number three is definitely the easiest one of the bunch for sure. I grabbed a couple pieces of wall art that I just didn't have places for. I kind of wanted to revamp a little bit. You can do this with old pieces, thrifted pieces, current pieces, pieces you want to update, whatever they might be. And I'm just going to go ahead and place some tape over the top of them. I have seen so many people on Pinterest doing this. It's like such a trend at the moment and I just wanted to try it as well. So you're just going to basically mask off with some tape the sections you don't want to add paint to. So I'm going to go ahead and just give this one a nice little straight line on this framed artwork and then on my pink one I did a diagonal line I'm using a bit of French cream spray paint to go ahead and spray this section here this is going to be fully sprayed with that French cream color and then our other piece is actually going to be sprayed with this canary yellow spray paint which was super super pretty I love the way that this one turned out it was really bright and bold which was kind of fun so I went ahead and sprayed that on there added a couple of coats of each I think I did about three of them just to make sure it was nicely covered and then I went ahead and I let that dry for just a couple of hours and then I came back to it to remove the tape which is the most satisfying part I love this part of any taping project for sure so I removed the tape from the frame and it just created such a graphic bold element and I love this for covering up artwork you might think is just not cute to start with especially pieces you might find at the thrift store you can give it new life with some spray paint
now we're jumping into my new favorite technique, which is punch needle. I absolutely love this. It's so much fun. So I started off with an embroidery hoop and some monk's cloth fabric. I will link all the supplies for this particular project below for you guys. And I went ahead and tightly applied the cloth fabric on the inside. And essentially this is just like a loosely woven fabric, which allows you to kind of use the punch needle tool very easily. So I went around and used just a pencil to kind of trace off my pattern. I did these half circle shapes. I've just been seeing a ton of geometric patterns lately and I wanted to kind of create my very own version. So what we're gonna do is just thread our yarn into our tool. And next what I'm gonna go ahead and do is start the process. So how you're going to be doing the punch needle is essentially you're gonna punch it in and then on the underside, you're gonna to wanna to grab the loop it creates and then move to the next strand, grab the loop again, move over, punch down, grab the loop. So you're gonna to wanna to grab it on the backside. That way it just stays down nice and flush and you're able to create a nice stitch. But a lot of people use this technique to create really cute pillow covers um, or wall tapestries, whatever you wanna do with it. I'm just making a little kind of round wall hanging at the moment. So I went around with my orange shade to start off with. And I also suggest using a medium weight yarn. Don't use anything too thin and nothing too thick. Um, this yarn happened to be perfect. It's probably about, I would say maybe like eight millimeters in width. With. So I went around and I just kind of punched this entire orange section with all of the orange. You just kind of go in a spiral circle. And then I went up to my next section and I'm using this nice white tone and I'm going to be filling this half circle in as well. And then I kind of decided as I was going around that I was going to leave the center of this circle open. I really liked the look of it having been open. So then I moved up to my third section and I'm going to end with this little tan shade. It kind of has like a mixture of tan and gray, which I love. And I'm going to be filling this one in fully with the punch needle. As you can see the back side's really loopy, but I personally prefer this side. However, I was, if I was gonna make a pillowcase or something, I would use a mixture of both and kind of flip it back and forth. I'm going in with a gray at the top. And what I was planning on doing was actually filling in the entire circle with yellow. But as I kind of did this yellow frame around the outside edge, I really love the simplicity of just having the yellow kind of simple frame. So I wanted to add a little bit more yellow and I did so by filling in that half white circle. Once I was done with that, I cut off all the additional monk cloth fabric and then what we're gonna do is just hang it on the wall and that finishes off this really cute decor piece And last but not least, we have the coveted moon mirror, which I have gotten thousands of requests to create and I'm doing that for you guys today. So I went in with some joint compound and I just kind of mapped out the shape of the moon on top of my round mirror. And then I added a nice generous amount of the compound on top of the mirror. So I just went through and kind of spread it about a quarter inch thick of compound because you're really gonna wanna build up on top of that to create texture and just like visual interest overall. So I went through, spread that onto my shaped area and then used a sea sponge to actually kind of stipple on top of it and create a really nice texture. Now, something else that I did after stippling the entire moon is I went along the edge where the mirror met the moon shape and kind of stippled across that as well. And it just gave a little bit of a blended look. As you can see right here, it just has like a nice little fade to it. So now it is time to create the craters. So to create them, you're gonna use a squirt bottle on the highest pressure, squirt down, do not worry. You're gonna wanna put a drop cloth down or something because it's gonna spray everywhere. And then just use Q-tips, cotton balls, or paper towels to soak up the excess water. And then you're going to let this dry. But before so, I actually went through and just kind of smoothed out some sections because I didn't want it to look perfectly like textured. I wanted to add a little bit more joint compound in some sections. So I let this dry overnight and this is the texture I achieved in the morning. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just mix together a lot of white paint with a bit of tan to create just like a nice light warm tone and you could paint your moon whatever color you want but I knew I wanted mine to be super neutral so I went over 
the top of the moon shape and filled in all the craters as well because I didn't really like the look of the mirror underneath. I really wanted this to look like a full on moon that was put on top of a mirror. And I went in with some darker tan colors and brown colors to just kind of accent some of the deeper crevices and some of the cracks on there and around the edges a little bit just to add highlight and definition. Last but not least, I added a tiny bit of like a whitish cream spray paint just to kind of blend it all. And that finishes off our moon mirror. Alrighty guys, so that was today's video. I hope that you enjoyed those wall decor items. I think my personal favorite ones was probably the moon mirror. It's just such a cool, unique piece. And I even took a really fun Instagram photo. Let me share it with you guys right here. I just love the way that moon mirror turned out. And then I think my second favorite, honestly, is a tie between those spray painted frames because they look incredible on the wall and the punch needle piece. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. And again, I wanna thank Javalia so much for sponsoring today's video. I absolutely love their coffee. I will link them below in the description box and you can actually use Javalia 20 at checkout for 20% off your order which is incredible and I will catch you all in my next video don't forget to subscribe to my channel for brand new home decor and DIY content every single week and follow me over on Instagram at Lone Fox Home which I'll put right there and I will catch you guys all next time have an amazing rest of your day bye guys <laughs>